crap. I only have one left. Need to go pick up more of this. I need to find out if they sell this stuff in bulk. Oh, so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so Joel just got a hold of me and said my fan shroud has been painted and it's finally perfect now, so I'm gonna go pick it up here at two o'clock. One of the problems is though, I actually already dropped the car, so I need to put it back up because one of the intercooler piping um, needs to be removed for it to fit in correctly. Now, technically I could squeeze it in, but since it's freshly painted, I don't wanna take any chances of getting messed up. It's a nice gloss black, he took his good time with it. He said he even buffed it and shined it up to get it as close to as perfect as possible. Um, I'm actually thinking about actually having it wrapped. The powder coat I'm not worried about. Obviously, that stuff's durable, but that being black and scratching, I'm thinking about actually taking it, maybe running it over to Hyperforce X where they do some wraps and stuff of that nature and have a clear ball put on it real quick. Just an idea, what do you guys think? Maybe not, maybe, I don't know. Just an idea I just thought I had. Um, so yeah, I think I might actually contact Emily right now and see if she can do that. So I gotta run up there, grab it, and see if Emily can do that for me. And if I do have to go down there, I'll take some video at their shop as it is freaking huge. Um, actually, I just said freaking, didn't I? I'm trying to cut out my cursing. I saw a couple people comment saying, try to cut down a little bit, so I'm gonna try. It's hard for me. I do curse like a sailor. I've worked in a lot of the shops over the years, so. I kind of grew up with it, and my dad kind of did it too, so I'll try to cut down as much as I can, but I gotta be honest, that's just how I am. If you guys don't really like it, I'll try my best, but I, that's who I am. I also drink alcohol, that's just, that's just me. So go ahead up there, gonna take care of this. See you guys in a little. Heading up to Joel's right now. Gonna go ahead and back out here real quick and uh, head on up. Should take me about 45 minutes to an hour to get there. It's not that bad of a drive, but enough that it can be a pain at times. So get up there and I'll take some video once I get there. Yo! Look at this, not even in here. Man, he's got some of the coolest shit, I swear to God. Look at this kind of stuff. Makes all the cage, paints, you know, just a supercharger, no big deal. No, this isn't a mess, trust me, I've seen a lot worse. And you get, you're always working on something cool, though. Do you think this is, dude, you have not... I mean, bro, it's getting worked. The, the car's getting worked on. It's not going to be perfect. How far? How much more do you have until that's done? Which one? That right? Yeah. A good bit. <laughs> uh, a good bit. The motor off. Are you? Yeah. So you're just going to trail it up, clean up a little bit, trail it up? Uh, probably the week before, I'm going to take the body back off and spray and white sealer. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to work more until then, and then hopefully uh, display it. I think this will look really cool up there, all shown off and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. That's gonna look cool. And then it'll come back, and then it'll be motor time and tranny time. Have they decided on a motor yet? <laughs> That's so awesome. God, man, see, this is what's cool when you get to do this kind of stuff. You get to see all what's new and what someone's working on. I just have to laugh because you can be drag racing this and stuff, and there's brakes though in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Great for stopping, huh? Yeah. yeah. Them drum brakes, huh? <laughs> oh, God. I'm snapping them off. It's the front, front's five lug though. Yep. I just noticed that. Yep. So the front's five lug. It's all converted. So, what do you use to convert it? Like, what is that from? Uh, what year Mustang? Uh, I'm assuming another that's Mustang. Like early 90s stuff. Okay, and this is like a mid 80s Mustang, right? Yep. Or maybe or I forget the headlights when they change. And stuff. There's so many different types of Fox bodies. I can't. I have no idea. I can't keep up with all that stuff. All right, just got back from Joel's place here. Picked up the shroud now, and it looks fantastic. Got the shroud back, and it looks much better. It's got my fingerprints and stuff on it, so don't. Yeah, it, it needs cleaned up. So everything really does because I've been working on everything. Uh, just like the rad pipe needs cleaned up here a little bit. I had someone mention to me about the worm clamps. Why do I use them and not use a T-bolt style clamp? When honestly, one, it's overkill, and number two, they're so large, it actually looks funnier than these. I really don't like the fact that the, um, I guess the worm clamps have these little cuts in it. Obviously, what it grabs onto to make it tighter and looser, um, but it is what it is, and that kind of looks, I mean, it looks fine to me. It could be worse. Uh, T-bolt clamps would have more of a smooth edge, but it would honestly be bulkier and I would be able to hide it underneath like I do these because they're so large. You'd have to sit on top and it honestly look bulkier in my opinion. Now the T-bolt clamps look great here because I'm able to hide everything down below. So 
some applications are great, some others they don't. Uh, kind of like here, these are worm clamps here and it's kind of hard to tell until you come to the one side and realize that they are actually worm clamps. So when you're looking straight on, you can never tell and it actually looks much better than what a T-bolt clamp was because T-bolt clamps are so large. So it's give and take kind of area thing. So in my opinion, it looks much better. I spoke to Joel also, so the catch can here, um, I don't have it fully bolted down, it needs another bolt there. Um, I'm thinking about selling my setup. If anyone's interested in this now also, um, it's made by Empire Performance, as you can see here. It is a one-off custom piece I had made. It actually uses a K&N style filter to make sure as much pressure as possible can be released, but nothing gets into it. Um, it was something totally different at the time. I've never seen any other super with this or anything even remotely close to it. Everyone uses the most generic stuff. And I wanted to stand out somehow. I see more people now have the OCD works valve covers also, so I need something to stand out. So I bought that and I got these from Drift Motion, which I thought looked really sharp. So I'm trying to do something to make a Supra look different, but clean at the same time. Um, I don't like extravagance, but I want it to be, I want it to be different. I mean, I think everyone wants something to make their vehicle or their car different from the rest of the crowd. I mean, who wants to be cookie cutter and be like the next guy? I mean, it's everyone wants something that makes their car or something about them special. So that's one of my little one pieces and blacking everything out as much as I can. And the cover here being a, well, I guess it would call it a ghost camo per se, which I'm not even sure if you guys can see it. I talked about it on some of the last videos, but my subscriber count here lately seems to be going crazy. So I'm adding new people all the time. So I want you guys to know that I do have some different stuff done to the car. Um, like you guys saw there earlier, I stopped and saw Joel and dropped all that stuff off and got everything in the car now. I'd highly recommend him if you're in the southern central Pennsylvania area. He is out of New Oxford. He's a great guy to deal with, very honest. Um, the times he gives you can be a little bit off at times, but for me it doesn't matter because he's honest about it. If something does gonna, if something is going to take longer than what it's supposed to, he contacts me and says, hey Ryan, I need like another day or I need another couple hours. I'd much rather someone be open and honest and go, oh yeah, man, I'll have it done. And then I go to get it and he goes, ah, it's just not done in time. He is always 100% honest with me and I love that about him. It's very hard to find many shops these days that are open and honest. So if you guys are looking for him, Piranha Fabrication and New Oxford PA, uh, he doesn't do social media or any of that kind of stuff. I keep telling him he needs to. So I tell him to try and open something up. If I can find him or get him to make a Facebook account, I'll drop it in the comments below and this way you guys can click on it and take a look. So I love rap music. Yeah, that's all I ever listened to. You know why, because I'm bad and bougie. That was really corny. Yep, that's all I ever listened to, like 20% of the time. I, what's 20% or what? no, 80% of the time. I get that backwards. I don't know why I do that. So I thought I'd talk to you guys about what car would I have if I wouldn't have bought the Supra. So for the longest time, believe it or not, when I was younger, I wanted a 69 Camaro. My dad was a muscle car guy. Um, he isn't in the cars as much as I am, but that's the car that I thought I was going to have. Um, I've spent years looking for them, and to this day, I don't really know that much about that era of car, and I just didn't devote much time. At the time, I was like 16, 17, and you know, I just don't know like I do now. So. I wish I'd had more information on those and those years cars. Um, I know way more about imports, Hondas, Nissan, etc. So that's the car I really thought I was going to end up buy. Then when I got into imports, I was like, man, I really want a Supra. I thought for the longest time that's what I wanted. And then I saw an FDR 7 in person and fell in love. FDR 7 had me in the fields for the longest time. I thought for sure, I was like, all right, I'm gonna find one of these. I can get them cheaper than you could a Supra at the time. You could buy ones with, you know, under you know 75,000 miles for like ten, eleven thousand dollars, and I was like, great man, I can get one of these cheap. And then I found out why I get them so cheap. Well, because they're breaking down all the time, and I wasn't mechanically inclined quite yet. And I was like, okay, why do they break down all the time? Well, they had this thing called the Wankel engine or the rotary, and I was like, okay, what's the issue? Well, apparently they got really hot and they would always have vacuum hose issues. I think, I forget how many vacuum hoses are in the engine. You can obviously fix it by going single turbo, et cetera. Stuff I know now that you can easily solve and if you take care of the car, it'll run for years and years. It's stupidity is what makes the cars have issues more or less than what the car can have issues. Um, so looking back on it, I probably would actually own an RX-7 if I would know what I know now. I actually, 100% being honest, I think they look much better than the Supra does. The Supra is a good looking car. But the FDR-7 is much better looking and has better lines in my opinion. If I could own one, that's what it would be. Um, actually, my friends over at Gears and Gasoline, uh, Ben Thorne, he actually wants one, but he wants to be blasphemous and buy one with an LS1 in it, you bastard. So he's trying to get one of those right now and uh, 
Every time I see one, they're so sexy, but I don't know why he's hell bent and has to have an LS in it. Now I get it. It is a lot, lot, lot less finicky than the rotary. Um, I don't care what anyone says, you do have to take care of the rotary in a different manner than you do have a, a piston engine. They do have a tendency to run much hotter because technically they don't have it, the strokes endless. I could go on all day about the whole rotary engine and kind of going in depth about it, but technically that thing just creates heat over and over and over again, and cooling's always been an issue. So if you have to run proper radiators, you have to make sure your intercooler is not in the way. That's why you always see a V-mounted intercooler on them because your radiator is 10 times more important than what the turbo is. I'd much rather see the turbo let go than that rotary motor. Um, I wish Ben Thorne would actually get one of those. Gears and Gasoline guys, if you're hearing me right now, Thorne, you need a rotary. Lynn, get a hold of him, shake him to death, and make him buy a Rotary RX-7. They are so sick, they sound so badass, and if he got it tuned properly and took care of it, that car would run from years and years to come. Guys, so one other thing I wanted to test for you here is I've been using this little guy here a lot. Um, it's my GoPro. No mic, no nothing. I've actually literally been holding it just like this in my hand for a lot of stuff where you see me moving around, doing a lot. Uh, I do actually watch the comments. If I don't reply to everything, guys, it is very hard for me, I'm sorry. Especially lately, the channel just seems to be growing exponentially faster than I actually thought it ever would. Um, I've gained like five, or what, 700 subscribers in like the last three or four days. It's, it's crazy to me, especially as small as I am. So thank you very much, I appreciate that. But the one thing I always do see is audio feedback. So I decided to go out and buy this little guy. So it's probably hard to see, but I bought a little external mic and I probably disrupted it by touching it. Um, I'm hoping this maybe improves the audio quality some. Now, the problem is with it, I work on my car a lot and this has to be physically attached to the camera. They do have one that is external I can attach to myself, but they are much more expensive and then I have to sync up the audio and it's, just, it's a lot more time involved than I really physically have the time for. Uh, it's unfortunate, but until this channel really takes off and I have more physical time to you know, focus on this channel, this is what I have to deal with. So I bought this and I'm hoping it improves the audio some and I'm hoping it helps you guys out some. Um, I'm also trying to gear this channel more towards not just Toyota stuff, but I love Toyota. I love anything to do with the Supra, but I also want to do more stuff on how things work. So like, I like explaining to people and helping people out. Um, like kind of, I had a little debate here earlier today, which you really shouldn't do on YouTube, um, discussing how a blow up fab works. And I, it seems to be there's some confusion there and I'd like to go a little bit more in depth. Uh, I might actually phys physically take off the blow up. A little bit, sorry, I can't, apparently I can't speak either anymore. I'd like to physically take the blow-off valve off the car too. Uh, thanks to Gears and Gasoline, Ben Thorne, thanks for the idea, buddy. Um, and actually kind of take it apart and show you how a blow-off valve works. This will be an external blow-off valve, kind of like that's on the car, um, and kind of give you guys a rundown on how that works and what, what they're made of, what, what makes them tick, what makes them work, and maybe help you guys out. A lot of people seem to understand how simple things in my head um, come as easy to me. Some others, it doesn't come so easy. So I'd like to try and help you guys out with that. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much as usual. Um, I'm really trying my best that I can with all this. Uh, this channel means a lot to me. Your support means a lot to me. I'm not always going to be perfect. Uh, I'm trying to cut down on my swearing. I'm not going to cut down on my drinking. Sorry, guys. I love my booze and I love my alcohol. Um, so that's probably not going to cut out anytime soon, but I'm going to kind of cut down on my swearing some. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate everything you do for me. As usual, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.